everybody. Happy Thursday. And when it's Thursday, what is it? I'm doing an FAQ video or things in the media. And there are a lot of things in the media and many of you have commented, don't think I, that I missed it. But I had a couple good questions today that I really wanted to address. And I've been doing some thinking about videos and I think I'm gonna do my journal topics as separate videos. I find many of you have let me know that you really like those short clipped videos where it's just something inspirational to kind of help get you through your day. So instead of doing two videos a week, now I'll do three and I'll do a you know journal topic inspiration. So share your ideas. If there's anything that you've read about, heard about, saw on Pinterest or something, tweet it to me, leave in the comments below and I shall make a video about that. So today I have two questions and both of these are really good, so let's get going. First question says, hey Katie, first of all, very nice video. Um, this person's referring to the agoraphobia video that I put out on Monday and if you haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Um, so they have a question describing the disorder you really focused on embarrassment connected to the possibility of getting out of a stressful situation. Does this feeling have anything in common with social anxiety? And if so, what are the main differences? Because if you remember correctly in my video, I talk about agoraphobia being an anxiety disorder. Now, the really awesome thing about the DSM, because I had to put a different book under my thing because I had to use this to reference, is that it, sh it shares with you differential diagnoses, which is really the way of saying, how is this different from the other disorders? Because a lot of them seem very similar. How do we differentiate between the two? And it says, I'm gonna read this to you because I tend to blab and so sometimes it's good if I just read you what it says. So with reference to social anxiety disorder or social phobia, it says agoraphobia should be differentiated from social anxiety disorder based primarily on the situational clusters that trigger the fear, anxiety or avoidance and the cognitive ideation. So in social anxiety disorder, the focus is on the fear of being negatively evaluated. If you remember when I've talked about this in other videos, social anxiety is when we fear what other people are thinking of us, what they might say to others about us, and that we could be negatively evaluated by them. Agoraphobia is more about trying to get out, having a panic attack, and being embarrassed about trying to leave. Now I see how these can kind of go together, but you can also see how they're separated. The social anxiety is more about how we're perceived by others, whereas agoraphobia is just the fear. And like it says, the fear or anxiety or avoidance because we worry about how we'll get out if we have a panic attack or that it could be really embarrassing because we might stumble and like try to get out really quickly. I hope that that makes it clear. If you need more clarification, feel free to re-ask the question and I can blab some more, okay? Question number two. Hey Katie, my therapist told me she'd like me to see a dietitian. Oh, she didn't. Only I'm not sure if I really need it. You never think you do. Sorry, I'll stop with my commentary. I do some eating disorder behaviors, but I still eat enough most days. And the behaviors are only there for a few days and then I have other behaviors, different behaviors that switch off and on. And I've only seen my therapist for two times now and I don't, I've only really told her what went wrong and I don't wanna waste people's time going to a dietitian when I don't really need it. This got so much chatter on the website. Holy shmamoles, you guys really had opinions about this. So I thought, let's talk about it. Now, seeing a dietitian is good. It's something that we can all, all of us who have any kind of eating disorder behaviors. I know if you're thinking, but I don't really think I have an eating disorder. I only purge sometimes or I only restrict, but it comes off and on. I have a video from like, I don't know, any of my OGs out there, it's like two years ago, my original FAQ video, I'm wearing like a teal sweater. It says FAQ on the thumbnail, so you can just search. Well, no, you can't, because all my videos have come up. But anyway, it says FAQs. One of them is, if you think you have an eating disorder, you probably do. Just let that wash over it for a second. Because I know it's hard and we always think, but it's not that bad and I don't do it all the time and it kind of comes and goes. Eating disorders are sneaky. They like come in, I feel like they're like ink and water where all of a sudden the water's turned a whole different color but we're like, but it only, it just started this little, it's crazy, it can get in there, morph, change. As soon as you think you understand where it comes from and what it's doing, it's already changed into something else. And so, when even when we feel like it's not bad enough to get more help, we still need to get more help because the sooner we get the help, the better. 
and seeing a dietitian, whether we binge, whether we purge, whether we binge and purge, whether we restrict, whether we overexercise, it doesn't matter. If we're using any kind of eating disorder behavior, a dietitian can really help. They're not going to make you get fat. They're not going to make you eat too much food. That's part of their job. They're going to work with you to put together a plan, to set goals with you, and they're going to check in with you, and they're going to challenge you. But it's all part of the process. Just like with a therapist, I'm not going to make you go all the way at once. Like, we're going to go through this and just, you know, get through all this shit so we can move on. That's not how it works. It's a process, and they're going to work with you. And I encourage all of you, if your therapist says, you know, we sh you should probably see a dietitian, do it. They are really helpful. They are amazing. They will definitely help you manage those symptoms. They'll ask you the hard questions about food and what you think about food because we know it's not about the food, but we're using the food to cope. And so they will work on that spot with you so your therapist can help you better manage the emotional stuff. And together, you get the best results. So don't think you have to be on death's doorstep to get help. Don't think that you have to be really thick into your eating disorder to get a dietitian to help you. You can all benefit. If you're struggling with any eating disorder behavior, please see a dietitian as well as a therapist. It gives you the best outcome, I promise. Okay? I love you all. I will see you. I'm not sure when I'll put out the journal topic video. You'll just have to subscribe so you don't miss it. And then I will see you all on Monday and some of you all see you in New York. Yay! Okay, bye!